It is my pleasure to introduce today our uh, speaker, Dr. Alisa Stroutlack. She holds a BS degree in engineering from uh, Smith College and a PhD in uh, material science from University of Oxford, UK. She has more than 10 years of industrial experience in applied material synthesis and characterization. That led to several authored, co-authored publications, 12 granted patents and patent applications. She is also a recipient of uh, EU Innovation Award and she is in the list of uh, top 50 women in engineering in 2020. As the head of image analysis at MyPAR, she manages the distributors in EMEA, contributes to the sales and marketing strategy and offers image analysis support to customers. Today, Alisa is going to give a presentation on materials characterization using deep learning image analysis. Alisa, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I also introduce Ben. Ben, a few words about your industry and other things, please. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, very quickly sort of uh, say a few words. So we're, we're um, MyPAR's uh, UK partner. So you mentioned about Alicia managing their um, their European business. So so my power base over in Ohio, uh, and we're based in in Guildford in the UK. Uh, and as well as my power, we we have a range of sort of materials characterization uh, suppliers uh, from things like thermal conductivity analyzers, um, of which there's one just about to go to Warwick. Um, but also um, instruments like AFMs, benchtop AFMs. Uh, AFMs that go inside SEMs for kind of detailed sort of analysis, nano indentation sort of systems and, and a whole wide range of sort of material characterization. Hello everyone, thank you so much for the kind introduction and for joining today's webinar. Um, as the introduction uh, mentioned, I'm, I'm here to review a few applications um, using deep learning image analysis on uh, materials and metals uh, characterization. Uh, for those of you who are still new to, to MyPAR, MyPAR Image Analysis is a, is a world leading um, algorithm development and image analysis software company. It started um, around 2017 uh, from a PhD project at the um, Ohio uh, University in the, in the US. Uh, the CEO uh, of, of MyPAR was working at the time on uh, quantifying titanium uh, microstructures, and this is how MyPAR was uh, born as a, as a product. Um, from, um, we're only going to focus on materials applications today, but MyPAR can be applied on all kinds of, of images and um, applications from materials to life science, to aerospace, manufacturing, drone analysis. Um, and it has an extensive portfolio um, of uh, real world um, applications. Because my part was it invented at the research university and because uh, most of us working at my part uh, have PhDs and lots of uh, experience working with uh, the software every day we try to incorporate as many requirements and features that we know are needed in, uh, in this area in order to address uh, the most challenging image analysis um, applications. Um, you can find my part cited in, uh, in many academic research articles. If you, if you look on Google, uh, we have now uh, my part at more than 100 uh, customers uh, whether they are companies or universities, and we've listed here only, you know, a few of the the larger ones. And our customers are really spread all over the world in probably now even more than than 40 countries. So, what is possible with image analysis for materials characterization? Um, as you might be familiar with imaging uh, techniques. This play an essential role in really understanding the materials uh, properties, uh, their performance, as well as their uh, manufacturing process. But while uh, imaging and images in general are a really good uh, starting point, in many materials and metals applications, 
Extractive quantifiable information is usually the step that takes uh, innovation to, to the next um, level. We see um, now that um, microscopes are and imaging uh, techniques in general are quite advanced, all the way from optical microscopes to uh, high resolution uh, micro CT um, analysis. We have lots of uh, data, but processing those data effectively uh, in, a, in a precise and accurate way is, um, is where image analysis comes in. If we look at some of the applications in material science, we can quantify phase analysis, uh, grain size analysis, uh, following different uh, industrial standards like ASTM, uh, E1112 in, in this case, porosity, inclusions, layer thickness, fibers, particles, defects, and um, a lot more. Um, if you are working with uh, image analysis, maybe you've tried um, ImageJ, for example, or any other uh, tool out there, you know that um, extracting information from, uh, from imaging uh, comes with uh, many challenges. Um, a lot of the images are, um, or sample preparations are not perfect. Um, they have maybe uh, unclear features, unclear boundaries. Um, maybe it's um, difficult to focus on certain features or you get some charging in an um, SDM. This is where a tool like MIPAR and especially deep learning um, is very helpful to make sure that um, all these features are accurately segmented, identified, and then um, a precise analysis can be uh, performed. Um, a lot of the traditional image uh, segmentation algorithms um, require either computer science or image analysis expertise. Uh, maybe some of the available tools out there require uh, some coding. Uh, maybe the user interface is not as friendly. This is why uh, MyPAR was created to basically address all, all these ch challenges, remove all the constraints that uh, researchers can face uh, when they want to extract um, quantifiable information from images. So instead of you know, spending time on coding or spending time with um, unfriendly user interfaces, they can focus on, um, on their research. Um, <clears throat> as um, you know, if it can um, happen that um, if you do maybe an, an analysis of an image versus your colleague, then the, the two results uh, don't match. We call that operator uh, bias. This is another challenge that uh, occurs when we don't have a robust solution to uh, analyze images. And um, again, accuracy and reproducibility are also some of the, the other challenges that um, some of the traditional uh, segmentation tools and softwares um, have. My part addresses all all this and uh, we're going to review a few examples and I also I will do a quick demo to see how uh, how easy it is to to use. And deep learning especially helps with uh, noisy microstructures, uh, poor sample preparation, so maybe you have some scratches, some contamination, maybe you want to do a grain size analysis on some of the grains that are not perfectly etched, maybe you have some ambiguous features or, or boundaries, um, all of these uh, challenges can really be addressed with um, deep learning. Uh, my part uh, uses what we call uh, recipes, which is a series of, um, of analysis uh, steps. Um, and once you create um, a recipe that can be applied on hundreds of images um, automatically. Um, users that um, face image analysis problems want a powerful tool, uh, something that can solve the most challenging segmentation uh, problems. 
a lot of the customers come to us after they've tried everything else. Um, and the, the reason why my part is so powerful is because, um, as I said before, we've incorporated lots of features and tools that are specific for the material scientists and can be integrated together in the recipe. So you can combine uh, tools, um, simple tools, like cropping an image all the way to applying the deep learning and um, performing mathematical operations between images all together in, in one platform, which incre increases the flexibility of the analysis. Um, my part is um, a very fast tool that's analyzing images. And that comes uh, because we offer batch processing. Once we put in the recipe, we can run it in batch automatically. You can even connect my part to your microscope for an even seamless uh, workflow. And that increases the analysis. Um, um, it's a very versatile tool. So again, because, because we can create recipes for um, every application, application that opens the possibility to look at many images coming from different uh, microscopes, coming from different modalities. And unless, unlike other softwares out there that have maybe a grains modules, a layer thickness module, uh, a particle modules, and then you end up purchasing a lot of add-ons that really only worked on images that are, are perfect, with the recipes and with all the tools, including deep learning that are incorporated in my part, you can address uh, many different in applications in, in just one tool and one um, interface. Um, my part also provides um, objective analysis through the optimization engines, engine, and um, we also offer uh, a lot of specialized uh, supports to to our customers. We have experience um, in image analysis, material science um, applications, industrial um, applications, and uh, you know we get to see a lot of images from, from lots of different uh, companies or, or universities. So we're more than happy to, to share that knowledge. I will uh, move on to a few um, deep learning applications, just to give you an idea of uh, what you can do with uh, deep learning. Uh, this is an example of uh, twinned grain structure in, in brass. Uh, so if you are uh, familiar with, uh, with the brass microstructure, um, you can see here that there are some, uh, some twinned uh, grains like growing gro across, such as this one, maybe here, this one as well. And it has been um, you know, a quite challenging problem for many researchers to perform grain size analysis, excluding these um, twinned grains. This is a um, very complicated um, analysis, impossible with some of the traditional segmentation tools, especially if those rely on maybe just looking at the threshold or just looking at the edges or boundary of, of features. The power of, of deep learning is that we can uh, train a model and we can se uh, separate the, the boundaries so we can have a layer training the, the grain boundaries. And then we can have a different layer and assign the pixels to uh, the grain itself. So in this case, um, the twins will be trained as part of the grain. And this is how the deep learning uh, makes a difference between um, the grain and the grain boundary, excluding the, excluding the twins. You can see here in the middle uh, what we call a confidence uh, map. So this is after the deep learning model is applied. You can see that the model converges very well. We uh, have a good contrast between uh, the white uh, and the black, which means that there, there aren't any gray areas of confusion for, uh, for the deep learning. And you can see that it, um, it performs uh, the analysis very accurately. 
um, ignoring all the all the grains in the final um, result. Once we have uh, a deep learning model and a recipe, it's easy to apply it on hundreds of images in uh, in the batch. This replaces uh, manual tracing. So without a solution like this that involves deep learning, um, researchers will would go and manually uh, do analysis by hand. So you can only imagine how, how long that, um, that will take. Um, of course, there are other uh, ways of doing grain size analysis for this microstructure, such as uh, electron backscatter diffraction. But as you can imagine, that's uh, quite expensive analysis and it's also um, time consuming. So you can see here how uh, deep learning uh, did a very, very good job with, uh, with very little training. This is another um, example of a grain analysis in, uh, in titanium and the challenge um, in this microstructure where some of these boundaries that uh, maybe you can't even see them that had um, a very faint contrast. So you see a lot of the grains that uh, have a very good uh, contrast here. You can really pick up the boundary quite easy is easily, but um, there are some grains that uh, are not as, as clear. So again, with the help of, of deep learning, we can try train a model and uh, make sure we annotate all the, all the boundaries that we know are present and then integrate that model in, um, in a recipe. This can, the same idea can be applied on samples that, uh, maybe have uh, some artifacts like scratches or again, maybe etching is, is not perfect. Um, uh, deep learning can be trained to ignore scratches, defects and uh, recognize uh, the, different, uh, the different boundaries. Once uh, segmentation uh, is done, so once we identify uh, the grains and, and grain boundaries, we can um, really do all sorts of, of measurements. Um, and in the next slide, I want to show you how the visualization uh, looks like in, in my part. This is a copper alloy microstructure. This is the original um, image, not, the, um, not an SEM, but an optical image this time. You can see the identified grains um, here. And then in the visualization tab, we can have the possibility to click on a value and then uh, we'll uh, see the corresponding grain. We can obtain the grain size distribution histogram. We can export all these um, images and also uh, the table of, of results for further uh, processing. We can also perform uh, measurements uh, according to the ASTM E1112 grain size uh, guidelines and uh, measurements like, uh, like this. So uh, the grain size um, can also be obtained automatically in a separate um, CSV file for uh, hundreds of, of images. This is an, um, a phase um, analysis um, where the, the goal was really to determine the, the phase fraction. Um, you can see here again a, a quite a challenging microstructure. And the, another requirement for, for this project was to um, remove the pore. So we have a, a pore here that um, again, it's quite tricky to remove if you only use uh, traditional segmentation and you only look maybe at the, applying a threshold that will pick, be picked up as part of the, the phase, which is not what we want. So um, my bar also has uh, the option to filter uh, different uh, shapes by uh, their, um, let's say, elongation. We can uh, filter features by size. 
So this is how we can not only uh, remove features like this, such as force, but we can also subclassify features within the same class. So for example, if we only want to include features of a certain uh, size, we can do that uh, as well in a, in a simple um, recipe. You can see here that the, the very fine uh, details were also uh, picked up and that the analysis is, is again um, in line with the, with the customer requirement. This other uh, phase analysis uh, project um, was um, done in collaboration with, uh, with NASA. And this was a particularly challenging uh, problem because um, the requirement here was really to identify the, the small particles uh, that you can see here in, in red and differentiate those from um, from this um, phases from the phases that is is picked up here in in green, you can see that uh, the grayscale uh, value is uh, is very similar. So again, differentiating that with um, traditional segmentation is is very challenging, and the way this analysis was performed before was again quite uh, quite um, expensive. It wasn't a visual in inspection, but uh, rather a qualitative um, analysis. Because we have uh, brightness variations, you can see as we moved from uh, left to, to right, there the image is, is not uniform in terms of um, imaging condition. Um, it makes it even more challenging for some of these particles to, to be uh, distinguished. But again, with, with the help of, um, of my part, you can see that um, this problem was uh, solved uh, very accurately and we were able to pick up the particles um, in all the areas of, of the microstructure very um, precisely. Once we can, again, identify the two, two different uh, phases, we can um, do measurements such as area fraction. Um, and once we have a, a recipe that works on um, microstructures like this, we can apply it again in, uh, in batch for a fully automated uh, solution. Another uh, phase analysis uh, problem here where um, the challenge was to quantify the alpha and uh, beta phases in, uh, in titanium um, while also ignoring uh, the pores. Um, the results you can see here on the right is, is again very uh, precise and very uh, robust. You can see that uh, the complex phases were correctly identified. The pore was uh, excluded from, uh, from the analysis and the recipe ignores any other pores or defects. And you can see maybe around here how uh, some of the, the features of the two different phases uh, vary. So uh, even, even with those, uh, you can see that the analysis is, is very accurate. This is maybe um, a little bit hard to hard to see, but I'll uh, I'll ex explain this microstructure. Is um, a morphology classification uh, again in in titanium. You can see in the original image that uh, the the only difference between um, these two areas we want to segment is is really the the texture. So identifying uh, different phases uh, purely based on texture has usually been uh, very challenging. Uh, but this is where deep learning really stands out. So deep learning uh, really likes the texture and 
it really likes the, the color. So by training um, a quick model, you can see the final segmentation um, that the two uh, different um, uh, morphologies were correctly segmented and uh, identified. Um, this particular um, application uh, was uh, performed using a point counting um, analysis. So you can imagine that's, uh, again, very time consuming. And there was a lot of bias that were introduced in, uh, in the analysis by all the operators uh, involved in um, analyzing the, the microstructures. You can see here how deep learning is very powerful in uh, complex uh, classification. And you can even see here um, some shadows from, this is a, a larger stitch. You can see that even with those, the analysis was, um, was performed very accurately. Uh, still inclusions is um, another application that we see um, a lot, and especially the analysis that is performed according to an ASTM uh, A247 uh, standard that um, uh, looking at identifying but also classifying the, the different uh, graphite uh, structures. You can see here an, an example going from the original image to the segmented image and then to performing the, the measurements according to the ASTM uh, standard. Another very common application um, in metals is defects analysis. Um, so picking up different pores, picking up different, uh, maybe uh, fusion defects, uh, cracks, or even uh, scratches. Um, here, we uh, started with a, a microstructure that looked uh, like this, and we successfully identified the pores in red and the cracks in, um, in green. Once the two uh, different features were segmented, again, we can apply different measurements, uh, for example, area fraction, number density of features, or you can do a pore size uh, distribution analysis if, if you want. This is one of the most common application in additive manufacturing, in uh, you know, prototyping. Uh, it's a uh, and defects could be you know, you know, of many different forms, types, and, and shapes. Just this is just an, an example. Um, another uh, application that we see a lot in um, uh, metals is uh, layer thickness analysis. Um, there are different uh, applications um, in ceramics and coatings as well. If we look at the different uh, layers, um, we see this analysis being performed on the focus ion beam uh, cross sections as well uh, when the, the material has uh, multiple uh, layers, or it's an, also an analysis that can be applied for um, failure analysis, identifying maybe some uh, delamination in, uh, in materials. The goal in this application was actually to uh, measure the layer thickness of um, these two different regions, one that had um, smaller, uh, more uniform circular grains versus the other area that had larger, more elongated uh, grains. Again, this is a quite uh, challenging and complex um, application because we don't only have to you know, identify the area of the grains, make sure that they are, belong to, to one versus the other category, but also measuring, um, measuring the thickness of the, the two different uh, regions. 
this can be done in a few different ways in, uh, in my bar. It's an example here where once we can, once we identify the region of interest, we can perform thickness measurements and um, obtain a thickness distribution along the, the band that we're, we're interested in. Uh, just for completeness, I wanted to show you some particle analysis um, as well. We see a lot of these as well, especially in the context of additive manufacturing, but chemicals as well. And um, the challenge in particles is really to identify the, the boundary. We have uh, particles in aggregates or particles that are, uh, again, not um, uniformly imaged in, um, in an SEM. Uh, deep learning does a very good job at um, identifying the boundary between these particles, but also picking up the texture of these um, different uh, particles. Once we uh, perform the segmentation, we can look at um, lots of different uh, measurements, um, whether it's the, the curvature of this particle, eccentricity of roughness. We can subclassify these particles on uh, depending on their size or shape, and then uh, really um, dive deep into you know the statistics of of particles. Another uh, challenging uh, application in additive manufacturing was uh, picking up uh, satellites. A satellite is um, a small particle like this that is being attached to, to a large uh, particle. Um, being able to do an analysis like this um, gives more insight about the quality of the um, powders that are uh, being used for um, for printing. And um, without a visual inspection, this analysis cannot be uh, done. This um, application was solved with uh, deep learning again, and a model was created to um, identify the small particles here. They were part of a, a training layer versus the, the larger particles. And you can see here on the right, that it uh, did a, a quite a good job. Again, after segmentation, we can do lots of uh, measurements, diameter uh, measurements, or even shape, or even the you know quant quantifying the number of particles that have uh, satellites, all in a fully automated uh, detection, which again was uh, a problem that the industry was was facing for many, many years. I also want to quickly just make you aware of the fiber, sorry, um, the fiber analysis, um, less common in, in metals, of course, but uh, quite common in materials, um, whether we're looking at filters, whether we're looking at um, Ceramic, um, we see fiber analysis uh, becoming more and more uh, popular. And the challenge with fibers is really to identify um, the and identify the the boundary of of this um, of these uh, fibers, especially since under the SEM they can look very uh, non-uniform. We saw fiber uh, analysis using uh, deep learning. And uh, you can see here an example between the original and the identified fibers. Once we identify the fibers, we usually look at the local fiber density orientation or fiber thickness um, variation. I only covered uh, a few applications uh, today. Uh, there are lots more than. Uh, We've seen and my part can can address it's uh, you know a lot more than than 300 um, applications uh, starting from you know materials all the way to satellite um, imagery drone analysis 
if you're interested to uh, see more examples, we have different um, uh, packages on additive manufacturing, titanium, um, grain size analysis. We have a few uh, case studies um, as well. And, um, you know, if you are interested to read more about um, how some of the other um, researchers use uh, MIFAR, you can find many uh, papers um, on, on Google search. If you want to hear more about MIFAR, you can uh, visit our website. Uh, we also have a recipe store that now is um, built in with the software, and I'm gonna show you that in a in a minute. You can try for free uh, the software for 14 days and um, go through the the different recipes, apply them on your own images, uh, get to learn how to put together um, a recipe, or if you're interested to submit an, an image and go through a proof of concept um, on your own images. We're um, here to, to help you. Is it uh, possible with your software to use a multiple of images and a multiple of techniques and then try to train it? Yes, that's actually a very, very good question. Um, yes, we, we usually call those different modalities. So maybe you have an image from either a different detector in the SEM or maybe an image from, um, a, you know, maybe you have a chemical map, for example. You can use um, all these different, yeah, all the different modalities to put together a deep learning model and identify the different features that you're you're interested in. And again, if you have some some images, you can send over. I'm more than happy to to look at those. Maybe you know, organize a meeting and go over your specific images as well. But that can be that can be done. Right. So um, my my question is, uh, with any deep learning, <laughs> you would have, uh, of course, had a lot of training data and test data. What if um, if I have some new images and there's a system, systematic difference between my images and your trained network would that then give give me a error systematic error error thank you uh that's a very good good question and i think there is still the misconception that you have to have lots of images to put together a deep learning model that's not the case so in everything i've showed uh today um we only use, you know, maybe five, five to ten images to train a deep learning model, and we don't have a pre-trained model that we apply on your images. The deep learning model is actually being trained on your um, on your images, and um, you can. There are different ways of training a model, so you can even semi-automate the annotation using a, a recipe or you can import some of the annotations if you have them. So maybe you're already doing manual analysis of grains and now you want to put together a deep learning model. You can just import those um, annotations automatically, quickly create a deep learning model and apply it in, in the recipe. The advantage of my part is that um, you don't only do analysis and then that's it. You can actually, by doing analysis or by applying this recipe, to hundreds of images, you get new um, inputs into the, your deep learning model. So you actually improve your deep learning model as you go through uh, your analysis, which is very powerful. And this is how. So the you, so the neural network is based on the user's uh, image database, then. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mohsen and then Michael. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. I just want to know, do you have any facility or function to generate 3D microstructure or just focus on 2D images? Yes, we have a 3D toolbox uh, as well, and I'm uh, I'm happy to share uh, a 3D uh, video uh, example with you as well, so you can see how it looks. Yeah. So my question is, if you have a different slice of one microstructure and then put top of each other, Yes. Can we generate a 3D or? Yes. It's possible. Okay. Okay. 
That's good. Yeah, so in, in the case of 3D applications, so maybe you you're have, a, let's say, a confocal Z stack or a focus ion beam stack or CT uh, stack, you would still start with the 2D analysis using the recipe and identifying the features that you want. Then you, you would import, um, you will actually run the analysis on in a batch, so on all your uh, image stack and then reconstruct it in 3D. In 3D, you also have the option then to improve the segmentation by doing segmentation in actual 3D if you think there are any other features that um, need to be separated. But I'm, I'm happy to, to share with you a 3D video example that will give you a better understanding of you know, how you can do that in MyPAR and how, it's, how it looks and how it works. Okay. Uh just one more question. You, mm -hmm. when we talking about TDD, let's say we have a TDD ABSD data, and then we want to extract that data, does model consider Euler angle as well, or not just based on contrast mode? No, it's it's only based on you know what you can see okay. in in an image. Thank you. I'm not quite sure. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Um, my my question is almost a follow up was what what Frank was asking. Um, I'm a bit puzzled that you actually said that you don't pre train your models, but actually train them on on the individual images. Um, I, I was wondering whether this introduces some sort of bias and whether you are also interested or thinking of using, say, geometric simplicities of certain defects or synthetically generated data in order to pre-train models. Is, is that an, a field of, of activity that you're doing? Um, so I can't talk too much about, you know, what, what is behind our deep learning, uh, but maybe to, to answer your, your question, um, there is, when it comes to, to bias, uh, obviously, the deep learning model relies on your annotations. So if you don't start with the right annotations, then the deep learning model would not be something uh, that you know, will give a good outcome in, in the end. There are ways to, to check the robustness of the model and see how well it actually picks up the features that, that you want. Um, and uh, usually with, with deep learning, um, if you if you have a texture, if you have color, it's very it's very good at picking those up in in just a matter of of a few uh, of a few images. Um, saying, having said that, there are also models. For example, maybe I put together a, a fiber model. I think that would be um, that. Yes, I can apply it successfully on a very different fiber micro, microstructure, but uh, the ideal. Um, scenario is that you want to, to train a deep learning model on your images to use images that are taking at the same magnification uh, to make sure that the deep learning really covers the entire variation that you could see or experience in your data set. Um, I, mm -hmm. Yes, I think I'll, I'll send you a link to a deep learning webinar that will dive maybe deeper into into that mm -hmm. that I can you know cover in um, in today's uh, webinar and if you have any other follow-up questions or maybe more specific deep learning application questions then yeah. feel free to yeah. to reach out to me I, I thank you very much yeah um, I, I was in particular thinking actually about some of the faint contrast in the green boundaries mm -hmm. that you've shown in some examples um, and, and whether actually it is really the best way in training it on the actual images or rather actually training it on synthetic data uh, and apply this on your images. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, please, please ask. Yeah, me. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm Park in Wall University. Thank you for an interesting talk. Uh, your software looks very fancy. Uh, as you, however, as you know, in the case of steel microstructures, some faces are quite complicated, such as bainite or martensite. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is it working well in the uh, complex faces of uh, steel microstructures? And do you have any experiences or examples for the polite bainite or martensite faces? 
Yes, we, we do um, have customers working on those applications. Unfortunately, not all the customers are willing to share their uh, microstructures, but I, I know what, what you mean. Uh, basically, if you can, so if you're looking at a microstructure and you can say how you would distinguish the two, for example, you know that one structure has a different structure uh, texture, you know that maybe it's of a different shape, you know that maybe it has a different edge uh, or it has a different particularity. As long as you, you can identify the difference between the two, then we can create a recipe that will follow the same thinking uh, mm -hmm. that you would do, if that makes sense. And there are different tools that we use. Uh, it's not only deep learning. Um, you know, when it comes to putting together a, a recipe or an image analysis solution, you have to be very creative. You can subtract maybe different phases. You can look at maybe creating one or even two deep learning models if that's needed. You can apply some of the, the filtering uh, tools that we have. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, the, the more complex the image is the more complex the analysis will be as well but in principle a recipe will follow the same thinking process that you would follow in terms of identifying the two once you have um, a way to identifying those then we can translate it into into a recipe and again i'm i'm happy if you want to share some images uh, i'm happy to look at those Thank you. Uh, Alisa, you mentioned you want to show some tutorial or something, right? Uh, you would like to proceed? Uh, yes, yes, okay. thank you. Okay. Okay. So I want to uh, quickly show you, for those of you who haven't seen uh, my part, just want to quickly show you uh, how it looks. Can you see my, my screen okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we open uh, MyPAR, we have five different um, applications here in the, um, the toolbar. The first one is Image Processor, which is what I have open here. Image Processor is the application where we can create uh, what we call a recipe, which is a series of analysis steps. In the Image Processor, we can then apply the recipe on uh, one single image and extract the measurements. Uh, best processor is the application where we can apply the recipe. We create an image processor on hundreds of images automatically and extract the results. Real-time processor is very similar to the best uh, processor, only that it acts as the connection between my part and your uh, microscope or imaging setup. So if you're um, obtaining micrographs automatically from a microscope, microscope and you save them in a folder, you can tell my part to watch that particular folder and every time a new image is being saved, a recipe is being triggered and it performs uh, the analysis automatically. So again, you save time, you don't have to save the images in one folder, then import them in my part and do the analysis. So this facilitates um, that. AI session processor is, as the name suggests, the, the deep learning um, um, technology that, that we use. In the AI session processor, we can put together a deep learning model, but we can also do any manual corrections to the segmentation. And the 3D toolbox, as I uh, mentioned before, is um, basically uh, the application that um, processes and allows us to visualize uh, 3D uh, structures. If I... Uh, quickly show you an, an example. So image processor looks like uh, this. We always have the reference image on, uh, on the left and the current image on, uh, on the right and then the recipe on the far, far right. I'm gonna show you a titanium uh, example. So. We can either open an image from here or drag and drop an image. Just like this. The challenge here um, is to really 
pick up the, the boundaries and do a grain size analysis. But you can see that the, the structure is, is so similar. So the internal structure of the, of the grain is very similar to the grain uh, boundary. So this is really the analysis uh, challenge here. On top of that, we also have some scratches going across. Um, it's also not the more, not the most um, homogeneous, let's say, um, image. So quite a few, few challenges. Um, and now if I apply the, the recipe, so it's a recipe that includes uh, deep learning, again, by dragging and dropping, you can see the, the results uh, straight away. We have the possibility here to, to look at the analysis either in black and white, overlay of the grains, uh, outline labels, um, these are all the grains, so they, they look like this, or we can look only at the whole grains. So since the grains at the edge here are not complete, we tend to eliminate them for the analysis. From here, once we have the, the grains um, segmented, we can go to feature uh, measurements. We can look at uh, whole grain, less to grains, even though uh, you know some of them are not complete. And we can pick lots of different measurements from here. For grains, we usually do caliper diameter. We can add it to the recipe, or we can click on view to visualize the the results. If I double click on one of the values, it will point me to the corresponding grain, or I can go the other way. I can click on a grain and then I will be pointed to the corresponding value. We can order this ascending, descending, and we can uh, generate all the, all the results as, as well. I want to quickly show you, I know we're running out of time, uh, how the batch processor works as, as well. So if I open the, the batch processor, the first step is actually to drag and drop the recipe. So I'll do that. And then um, I'll add here, again, in the interest of time, just to images so it, it goes quickly. So we can add here as many images as, as you want. Uh, we click process. You can keep an eye on the on the process. It's, it was quite quite quick. Then to view the results, we click on view results, which will actually open the AI session processor. So from from here we can look at the results of um, of the analysis we can actually switch it to AI as well and train um, a model very quickly by using the T analysis. Or we can correct the, the analysis um, as well. So maybe if there was another grain boundary going across, we would go on pain, uh, erase, and do something like, like this. Or if we would want to remove maybe a boundary that shouldn't be there, we can go to fill um, and you know do something like this. So you can see it's it's quite quickly to uh, to work with. Once we process images in in batch, we can perform the same sort of of measurements and um, export the cumulative results from all these uh, this images. I will uh, stop here for, for today since uh, we're running out of time. Um, but if you have any, any other questions or you want to, to follow up, you have any other images you would like me to look at, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to do that. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, thanks, Alisa, and uh, I hope uh, no more questions. Uh, anybody, any questions? Um, Alisa and Ben, I have one uh, quick question. Um, what is the cost of this uh, software package, <laughs> and uh, is there any discount for academic purposes? Uh, there is a discount, um, oh, okay. <laughs> but the, the, the price really is um, is kind of license based and it, okay. it really depends on the uh, type of license you go for. So it could be a sort of individual local oh. license or a network license or a group license. So there's plenty of kind of options. What I'll do is maybe send you an email with just okay. uh, a bit more sort of spelt out so you can kind of see how it breaks down. OK, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, OK, if no more uh, further questions, uh, I would like to thank uh, Alisa and Ben for your time and giving this wonderful talk on behalf of our group. OK, thank you very much. Have thank a wonderful you. Thank uh, you. afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.